Welcome back to our class. So earlier we paused with a task wherein we have to at least write down what, how we define a professional Christian teacher. And we will continue with our discussion and today we are still, uh, the main topic is still about teachers as teachers as professionals or professionalism of teachers. Now, <clears throat> one of the basis of looking for a definition of professionalism is the code of ethics of teachers and when we take a look at a section one of the sections in the code of ethics for professional teachers i think it's in article 11 of the code of ethics of professional teachers in section one it once again tells us that a teacher must be someone who live with dignity not just sometimes not just most of the time but at all times. So a teacher, a professional educator must live with dignity at all times. I was just wondering, what does it really mean to live with dignity? You may wanna think about that and I will be asking some of your thoughts on that later on. And uh, section two also mentions that a professional educator is someone who places a premium upon self-respect and self-discipline as principle of personal behavior so someone who you see can you see that someone who plays a premium upon self-respect because as an educator you must respect yourself you know and when you say self-respect meaning you do things that are for your welfare something that is not gonna self-destruct you self-harm you and you must also have self-discipline uh, when we talk about self-discipline, it's a, it's, very, it's a very important principle. As a matter of fact, Ellen White even says that if you, cannot, uh, if you cannot discipline yourself, how can we expect that we can discipline others? So a professional teacher is someone who places a premium upon self-respect and self-discipline. And these two are the principles of personal behavior, meaning... Even outside the classroom, a teacher must continue to practice these behaviors. And again, you see the word there, dignified or dignity. It was repeated. So dignified personality, someone who is more model worthy of emulation, someone who can be looked upon by students. And I remember uh, last Friday when we talked about teachers, some of you mentioned that one of the reasons why you chose education is because of a teacher who has given you a good uh, example and you would like to be like them, right? And number four, which I really like the most, is that someone who recognizes the Almighty God as guide of his own destiny. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, professional teacher is not just someone who has passed the board exam, not just someone who graduated from a high reputable institution, someone who is a member of PAFTE or other organizations, someone who is undergoing a continuous professional development programs. But a professional teacher, a true professional teacher is someone who has self-respect, self-discipline, dignified, and more importantly, someone who recognizes the Almighty God as guide of his own destiny. You know, in the, the, the Code of Ethics, we've already read it earlier, right? The importance of professionalism and what a professional teacher is. Someone who possesses dignity, reputation, with high moral values, technical and professional competence, and adheres and observes practice a set of ethical and moral principles standards and values and because we believe that teachers must be good in what they do they must also be aware of the different models of teaching this is actually our lesson for the next meeting next week but let me just give you a brief preview so according to robert manzano there are four uh, different variables uh, when it comes to models of teaching so there is this classroom strategies and behaviors 
planning and preparing, reflection and teaching, collegial, collegiality and professionalism. Uh, if we take a look at these later on, we can connect actually these in, the, uh, in our topic about professionalism of a teacher. But I will not discuss this for now. I'm just showing you that as an educator, you must be aware of these. You must know the different models of teaching and how you can teach more interactively and more how you can get your students' attention and how you can deal with them. Um, we will be discussing all of this in, a, in more detail later on. In closing for our discussion today, uh, I would like you to look at Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 to 24. The Bible reads, Whatever your task, put yourselves into it, as done for the Lord and not for your masters. Since you know that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward, you serve the Lord Christ. Dear future teachers, if you really want to, be, to become a professional Christian educator, in everything you do, you must do it, not for anyone, but for the Lord. You become competent. You know all the different drills, all the different principles, all the different theories, not because you want to become known or because you want people to say how good you are, but you are learning all these things for the Lord. And you are adhering to the moral principles, not so that you will have a reputation for it, but because you are doing it for the Lord. And even right now, as students, as you study the different professional education subjects and other general education subjects, always do your best. Because you know what? The practices that you are doing now, these are going to reveal what kind of teachers you will become in the future. So my prayer for you as you go along with this week is this. Number one is that you will commit to become a professional Christian teacher. Someone who does not just uh, meet all the six qualifications earlier, but someone who has a desire to be a missionary for Christ. And second, is that you will not treat your current preparation as something that is unrelated to your future profession. As early as now, be the best that you can be. Be the best version of yourself. And you are doing it, not for someone else, but for the Lord. And in closing, I'd like to once again invite you to bow your head with me as we close our discussion with a prayer. Pray. Father God, thank you for reminding us that we have a duty to become a true Christian professional educator. We cannot do it on our own, but we can do it by your grace. All we just have to do is to fully surrender ourselves and to acknowledge you as our source of wisdom. Be with us now, Lord. Continue to guide us, we pray, in the loving name of Jesus. So what you have to do now is you must look at the I study. There are things there that you must do and make sure that you follow the instructions carefully. There are specific instructions. There are also rubric that will guide you as you finish your activities. And please make sure that you submit all of these on or before the set deadline. Let us become responsible teachers in the future by becoming responsible students today. Thank you, God bless you, and have a great day.